History isn't a straight line. Consider the Dutch Empire, dominant in the 17th century, replaced by the British, who yielded global preeminence to the United States after World War II. Ray Dalio, in his analysis of the last 500 years, identifies a recurring big cycle, a pattern of approximately 150 to 250 years for the rise and fall of dominant powers, often punctuated by internal shifts roughly every 60 to 100 years this cycle isn't merely about external wars, it's deeply tied to internal dynamics. The buildup of debt, the widening gap between rich and poor leading to social friction, the loss of civility, and ultimately internal conflict weakening the nation before external challenges deliver the final blow. These aren't abstract theories, they are measurable phenomena reflected in metrics like debt-to-GDP ratios, wealth concentration statistics, and indices of social and political polarization. We see echoes today, rising national debts globally, exceeding peacetime records, documented increases in wealth inequality across major economies, and heightened political factionalism observed in nations from the U.S. to Brazil, India to parts of Europe. Understanding this long wave, this roughly 80-year rhythm within the larger rise and fall, isn't just academic. It's about recognizing the historical forces shaping our present, forces suggesting we might be approaching another significant turning point in the global order. The intuition that history moves in grand cycles isn't a modern invention. Ancient civilizations meticulously track time, searching for patterns far longer than human lifespans. In China, the sexagenary cycle, or Ganji, combining 10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches, created a 60-year repeating sequence, used for millennia not just for calendrical purposes, but for understanding historical rhythms and even forecasting dynastic fortunes. Similarly, the Vedic tradition in India utilizes a 60-year cycle called Samvatsara linked to the orbital periods of Jupiter and Saturn, marking distinct characteristics for each year within the cycle, influencing ritual and societal planning. Even the Maya, with their intricate calendar round interweaving a 260-day sacred count and a 365-day solar year, generated a larger 52-year cycle approximating this multi-decade rhythm. While distinct from modern economic or sociological analysis, these ancient systems demonstrate a persistent human attempt to perceive order within the apparent chaos of time, a search for long waves governing human affairs and cosmic harmony. They recognize periods of growth and decay, fortune and misfortune, aligning human experience with perceived celestial or natural rhythms, suggesting this tilde 60-80 year timescale resonates deeply with our collective observation. In the early 20th century, Russian economist Nikolai Kondrachev identified statistically significant long waves, approximately 50 to 60 years in duration, in price levels, production volumes, and international trade data across Western economies. Analyzing data back to the late 18th century, he observed periods of inflationary growth, driven by expansion, followed by stagnation and deflationary depression. Um, Kondratiev himself didn't fully explain the cause, but Austrian economist Joseph Schumpeter later provided a compelling mechanism. Waves of technological innovation. Schumpeter argued that clusters of radical innovations like the steam engine and cotton textiles, first industrial revolution, roughly 1,780 S, 1,840 S, Railways and steel, mid-19th century, or electricity, chemicals, and the internal combustion engine, late 19th, early 20th century, drive massive investment booms and economic restructuring. This creative destruction displaces old industries and creates new leading sectors, generating decades-long upswings. Later, information technology and telecommunications fueled the wave peaking around 2000. These economic super cycles potentially lengthening towards 70 or 80 years with globalization and faster information flow directly impact national power. Nations that successfully ride the wave of new technology gain economic dominance, funding military strength and global influence, a key component of Dalio's big cycle where economic power precedes geopolitical might. Beyond economics, the very mood and structure of society appear to pulse in long rhythms. William Strauss and Neil Howe proposed a compelling four-stage generational cycle lasting approximately 80 to 100 years, driven by the sequential passage of distinct generational archetypes. They identify four turnings. First, a high, 
an era of strong institutions and collective confidence, often following a major crisis post-Barnacle era. This births a profit generation focused on values. Second, an awakening where spiritual exploration and rebellion against the established order rise, led by the nomad generation challenging the highs conformity, e.g. the 1960s counterculture. Third, an unraveling characterized by weakening institutions, rising individualism, and cultural fragmentation shaped by the hero generation focused on pragmatism, e.g. the 1990s. Finally, a crisis, a period of potentially existential threat where institutional life is reconstructed, demanding collective action and sacrifice led by the artist generation seeking stability, e.g. the Great Depression slash WR era, or potentially the period initiated by the 2008 financial crisis. This cycle of social cohesion followed by fragmentation and subsequent rebuilding directly mirrors the internal order and disorder phases Dalio identifies as critical to an empire's strength. Periods of unraveling weaken social trust and political consensus, making societies vulnerable, while crisis turnings, though perilous, can forge renewed unity and purpose, impacting a nation's trajectory within the larger global power cycle. Zooming out to encompass millennia and diverse cultures, the field of cliodynamics, pioneered by researchers like Peter Turchin, Jack Goldstone, and Sergei Nefedov, uses mathematical modeling and vast historical data sets to identify recurring patterns in social history. One key finding is the secular cycle, typically spanning 50 to 100 years in agrarian and early modern societies, though potentially applicable later. These cycles describe phases of growth followed by decline and collapse driven by interacting internal pressures. It often begins with relative stability and population growth. However, as population presses against available resources like land or energy, living standards for the masses stagnate or decline. Simultaneously, the number of elites wealthy individuals, nobles, officials, tends to grow faster than the overall population, fueled by accumulated wealth and social mobility. This elite overproduction leads to intense competition among elites for limited positions of power and wealth. This internal conflict, coupled with popular discontent stemming from declining living standards, drastically increases the probability of political instability, civil war, and state breakdown. Turchin's analysis of historical data from ancient Rome, medieval Europe, Tsarist Russia, and dynastic China reveals quantitative evidence for these dynamics. This framework strongly aligns with Dalio's emphasis on internal conflict, particularly wealth gaps and political polarization as primary drivers, weakening an empire from within, making it susceptible to external shocks or rival powers. Could forces beyond human society influence these long waves? Some researchers point towards the sun itself, while the familiar 11-year sunspot cycle is well-known, German astronomer Wolfgang Gleisberg, analyzing centuries of sunspot records in the 1930s, identified a longer, more subtle cycle averaging around 88 years, now often called the Gleisberg cycle, typically varying between 70 and 100 years. This cycle represents a modulation of the amplitude of the shorter 11-year cycle. Intriguingly, minima in the Gleisberg cycle, periods of prolonged low solar activity like the Maunder minimum, 16451715, or the Dalton minimum, 17901830, have shown correlations with periods of cooler temperatures in parts of the world, potentially impacting growing seasons and agricultural yields. Some studies explore potential knock-on effects, shifts in atmospheric circulation patterns, altered precipitation, and subsequent impacts on food prices, resource availability, and perhaps even economic activity or social unrest, especially in pre-industrial societies heavily reliant on agriculture. However, the links are complex and debated. Solar activity is just one factor influencing climate and separating its signal from volcanic activity, greenhouse gas concentrations, and internal climate variability is challenging. Furthermore, quantifying the precise economic or social impact remains difficult. While not a deterministic driver, the Gleisberg cycle introduces a potential natural pacemaker operating on a timescale remarkably similar to the socioeconomic and generational cycles we've discussed. 
adding another layer to the intricate web of long-term change. So we have economic engines pulsing with innovation cycles, societies shifting through generational moods, internal pressures building and releasing according to cladonamic principles, and even potential nudges from solar activity, all operating on roughly similar 60 to 100 year timescales. It's tempting to seek one master cycle, but reality is far more complex. These different rhythms overlap, interact, and influence each other in non-linear ways. An economic downturn, Quandratiev trough, might exacerbate social tensions already building during a generational unraveling. A period of high solar activity boosting agricultural output might temporarily alleviate resource pressure predicted by cliodynamic. Conversely, multiple cycles peaking simultaneously, say a technological disruption coinciding with high generational friction and internal elite conflict, could amplify instability, potentially triggering a major crisis or accelerating a shift in the global power balance, as Dalio suggests. Physicist Ilya Prigozhin's work on self-organizing systems shows how complex systems far from equilibrium can spontaneously generate rhythms without an external clock. Financial theorists like Didier Sornet apply concepts from complexity science to understand market booms and crashes, seeing them not just as random events, but as emerging properties of the interacting system, sometimes culminating in predictable in a statistical sense dragon king events rather than purely random black swans advanced techniques like wavelet analysis allow us to decompose complex time series data revealing how energy is distributed across different frequencies often showing power concentrated in these longer cycle bands alongside shorter business cycles and seemingly random noise the 80-year wave might be less of a single monolithic cycle and more of an emergent resonance frequency within a deeply interconnected global system. If these long cycles exist and interact, can we use them to anticipate the future? Ray Dalio synthesizes multiple factors into key indicators tracking an empire's position in the big cycle. These include one, financial strength, debt levels, reserve currency status, balance of payments, two, internal order, wealth and values, gaps, social cohesion, political effectiveness. Three, external order, trade dominance, military power, technological leadership, geopolitical influence relative to rivals. By tracking these metrics for major powers like the US and China, Dalio argues we can assess their relative trajectories. Current data points raise concerns. Many developed nations face record debt burdens accumulated over decades. Wealth inequality has demonstrably increased fueling social resentment documented in numerous studies and surveys political polarization is visibly high in many democracies hindering effective governance simultaneously we observe a clear challenge to the post wr world order marked by intensifying u.s china competition across technology trade and military domains alongside conflicts like the war in ukraine reshaping global energy flows and alliances and a trend towards deglobalization or regionalization. Does this confluence of internal stress and external challenge aligning with the potential downswing phase of several long cycles mean a major turning point? Perhaps even a systemic crisis is imminent, potentially around the mid 2020s, as some cycle theorists might suggest. While precise prediction is impossible due to complexity and unforeseen events, the convergence of these indicators viewed through the lens of historical cycles strongly suggests we are navigating a period of heightened risk and transformation in the global order. Recognizing these potential 80-year waves and the larger cycles of global power isn't about fatalistic prediction, it's about informed preparation. As Ray Dalio emphasizes, understanding the recurring patterns of history, the interplay of debt, internal conflict, external challenges, and shifts in economic and technological power provides invaluable context for navigating the present and future. While statistical cycles don't dictate events, they highlight periods where the probability of certain kinds of change increases significantly. Ignoring the buildup of debt, the fraying of social fabric, or the rise of geopolitical rivals based on wishful thinking is historically unwise. Instead, understanding these dynamics allows individuals, businesses, and nations to adopt timeless principles. Diversifying assets and relationships, managing finances prudently, prioritizing education and innovation to ride the next technological wave, strengthening internal cohesion and resolving conflicts peacefully, and engaging realistically with the shifting global landscape. 
The 80-year wave is a powerful lens reminding us that stability is often temporary and change is constant. The key isn't to fear the cycle, but to understand its mechanics and adapt intelligently. What patterns do you observe in your own communities or industries? Explore the data, consider the historical parallels, and let's discuss how we can best navigate the currents of change.